<laughs> Here we are at Wally Park. Going to LAX to fly to Toronto. Dan's my Uber driver today. Hey, it's George the Tech. And Dan Leonard with a boo-boo. Oh, he got a boo-boo. He whacked his head on the hatch of the car this morning. What a way to start your morning at 4.30 a.m. Anyway, we're at LAX heading up to Toronto to the Great White North. Take off, eh, for VO North. And I'm just reveling in the, in the sheer disaster of the acoustics of Terminal 6 at LAX. <laughs> it is so noisy and echoey in here. Look at the ceiling. You know, we always talk about ceiling clouds. You like a good ceiling cloud. Uh, this, this place could use a couple of those. This place needs some ceiling clouds, big time. It is all 100% hard surfaces, the whole ceiling. You got glass all over here, drywall here. You got marble back here. It is an absolute acoustical disaster. I mean, listen to the announcements. What a disaster. Anyway, that's our life. We can't walk anywhere without hearing echoes, reflections, bad, bad sound. <laughs> anyway, we're having a, we're gonna be up there doing VO North and we're going to be doing actual VOBS from VO North, a tech talk, which will be airing at our usual time. And it uh, should be a lot of fun. Dan, what are you looking forward to at VO North? Uh, speaking to the crowd, seeing people I haven't seen in a long time, there's a significant hug debt going on that we have to take care of. And now, and now I have something that everyone won't give me sympathy for. Maybe we can all sign your Band-Aid. Oh, there you go. That, that'd be different. I have a bigger Band-Aid if you want it. No, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. And speaking of Band-Aids, I mean, speaking of voiceover actors, <laughs> <laughs> it's Dave Tobak. We're on the same What's flight. Up, How you doing, dude? Good to see you. What are the chances? I've been here the whole time. Didn't even see you. That's hilarious. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're gonna go take off, eh? We go to Vo North. We'll see you. Donuts on board. They got donuts on board. <laughs> donuts and beer, eh? Take off. Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop, and we are at Vo North. North. This is a great lounge they have here. We've been talking to people here, and we've been having a great time. It's the last VO North, but it's like a lot of other voiceover conventions, but this one was really special, and we met some really cool people, didn't we? It's more intimate. You know, it's a much smaller scale and uh, a different crowd. It's Canadians a lot, anyway, and so it's just, it's got the Canadian vibe, but you still get all the same great knowledge. Right, and we're, like, looking at, like, Massey Hall and all these cool places here in Toronto, and... We're going to talk to a bunch of different different people, so join us right now. Voice over body shop. Voice over body shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, JMC Demos, when quality matters. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, we're here at VoiceOver North. We're having a great time talking to all sorts of people in this beautiful lounge that, that's here, the VIP lounge. I, we're VIPs. Ooh, yeah. You know, it's like we actually have, like, VIP badges and stuff. Uh, but we've got uh, talking to some great people, uh, Ellie Ray Hennessy and Brad Newman and... Uh, Kim Handysides and her daughter Lisa, and some other. Jay, uh, was it Jay Cox? Yeah, yes, and uh, 
Jack Cox. Sorry, Jack. Yes, he's he's a, a, a writer, producer, director, directing, casting director, all sorts of cool stuff. Great interviews, some really cool insight. So stay tuned uh, as we'll get into these. And let's start off with our first interview. All right, we're talking with Dervla Trainer, who is the founder and the head honcho here at VO North. And uh, what, thank you, for one, one, for having the conference. Thank you for coming. Our, our pleasure. It's been great having you here. Uh, what are the origins of VO North? How, how did you come up with the idea of doing this? Well, I have a, an event production background, um, and I went to this meetup in Toronto, and it was just at a bar, completely unorganized, just, just meet here and we'll chat one evening. And was uh, that VO and TO, or...? Uh, yeah, it was. O over at the, the Frog and Peach or whatever the name place was on, on Young Street? So long ago. Yeah, like the Frog and something <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> something and something. And um, there were people, someone drove up from Buffalo. Someone came from Oshawa, which is about 45 minutes east of here. People drove in from everywhere just to sit and talk to other voice talent. And I had conversations that were so valuable. I thought... Well, people are clearly craving something like this. I know how to put on an event. So then uh, one thing led to another. And, uh, and then Tanya helped me with curating because she's an agent and she has connections to, you know, a lot of very credible people. And uh, that kind of, it spiraled from there. And here we are. And how many years have you been doing this? This is the fourth. Then this is going to be the final time you're doing that. Yes, I know. I'm sad to see it go, but it's time. Well, it, it's something that's going to, it takes over your life for uh, the time that you're doing it. Yeah, it's been my full-time job for the past month and a half. I, so not, no voiceover, well, like a little job here and there, but um, yeah, it's, it's quite time-consuming, but it's a labor of love. That's great. Uh, what, what was your philosophy behind this type of conference? Because it's a little bit different from some of the others. Yeah, we, the, ba the few big things are bringing the community together, meeting other people, learning from credible uh, speakers who are not trying to sell you something. Um, we get, we really try to get speakers who don't normally do conferences, but they, they're working in the voiceover industry day in, day out. So we just want to bring as much value as we can, bring the community gather, together and, and just learn every aspect of your voiceover business. Now, now Toronto's a unique market. I mean, I've, you know, I, I you know, lived near here, so I was up here, and I and I got to go to some of the VO and TO things, and those were a lot of fun. But the market has really changed because Toronto was really a, a production hub, so there's a lot of studios and that sort of thing. And I found that people in Toronto were slow to transist to the home studio model. Did you did you find that too? Well, the pandemic really helped. Well, it did uh, in it LA too. In gear. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, it. Yes, I had a home studio, which actually gave me a leg up before the pandemic because I had like a whisper room booth and I had a full, you know, MKH416 mic and um, I was set up at home, um, which gave me a leg up. Um, but, well, for online casting and stuff, but there was still a lot of in-studio um, sessions and, and auditions and everything. But the pandemic really kicked it, kicked it into home studio gear, I guess. So, yeah. So I think nowadays there's a lot less um, in person. Yeah. yeah. Well, George and I were always saying that, you know, for 10 years we were busy telling people, you know, you really need a home studio. You really should do this. And of course, when the pandemic hit, we were very, very busy. And I'm sure that the same thing happened here with people like, how do I do a home studio and stuff? Yeah, yeah, your business must have skyrocketed. <laughs> oh, it did. It was, as, as, we're, as we like to say, we were busier than a one-legged guy in an ass-kicking contest. <laughs> so it was... Uh, yeah, yeah, it was same here. I had a lot of people contact, I mean, my skills are nowhere near yours but people just saying help I don't know what to do and I'm like well I th like this is what I did I don't know but then I just put them in touch with other people but yeah definitely a lot of people yeah. trying to figure it out <laughs> yeah. well there's, there's a lot of engineers here in Toronto because there are a lot of post-production houses and the, and the network productions and stuff like that and there's and there's also a great theater and 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 movie community here right yeah it's kind of like New York right you've got your Broadway we've got our 
I don't even know what you call it, but there's just well, a lot the of different theaters. We're, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're literally the looking Hall the legendary Massey Hall, which is why I love this venue. Yeah. Lots of windows, and you're looking directly at one of our legendary halls. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then the Pantages is right over there, and which I everybody saw Phantom of the Opera at. If you lived in Buffalo, it was like you must come see the Phantom of the Opera at the Gloria, and then and then they discover the Winter Garden Theater in this building over Beautiful here. Beautiful theater, yeah. And then there's more just east of here or west of here as well. So yeah, lots of theater, lots of production. It's I mean. Toronto and, and Vancouver as well, but Toronto is definitely the hub in Canada for voiceover and acting and all that jazz. <laughs> so what are your plans now that you're not going to be doing this? For plans for VO North or me? For you. Well, still voiceover, but um, I'm shifting into a bit of television production as well. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's shocking how similar event production is to... Um, television production so I'm yeah I'm just easing right into it it's fun um, but I'll definitely always do voiceover as well great well Dervla thank you so much for putting on VO North and for having us and uh, we're, we've been having a great time great thank you so much for coming honestly we love having you here <laughs> well we're back here at VO North and one of my favorite things about Toronto and coming to Toronto is Ellie Ray Hennessy a marvelous coach and just a, a delight to have around and to, to, to work with. Welcome to VO North and thanks for coming. Dan, everything is awesome when you're part of the team. Ah! Come on, this is, this is a phenomenal experience as always just to get to chat to you and get to chat to uh, all brilliant members of this community um, and audiences, you are the reason that we story tell it all. So for everybody out there, thank you for your commitment to uh, raising the bar in storytelling. And thank you for, you know, interviewing those of us who are constantly trying to change the vibration of the planet through storytelling. Because, you know me, I, I just think that communication, it is the, the human connection. This is a real plant, FYI. Um, <laughs> just like you yeah. and me, I'm a plant. Don't tell anybody. Da, 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 da. So we're uh, we're here breaking the code and we're telling lies and we're loving each other hard and uh, making the magic happen, which it's all about. Because I feel like in real person, things change, and we haven't had that opportunity for a while. So it's it's really really exciting to see what's happening when you actually have. A human being yes, we, that we you can the human reach out and touch somebody's yeah. hand, make this world a better place if you can. Uh, there's fun happening, and there's fun happening everywhere, even at your home studios, alone. I know it feels like you're alone. You're not. This We're all one energy gang. We are the ones that create the magic, alchemical magic. That's what the storyteller is. That's what you are. That's what is happening right now, and hopefully we can share a little bit of of that with one another. Now, what were, what were you teaching here? I, we were sort of oh, watching the end of your class what, yesterday. It was well, going in a number of directions. But. <laughs> well, uh, I teach um, how to exist in the void, how to color outside the lines, how to find the place where extraordinary happens, and it isn't in institutionalized training or classes. <gasps> Yes, and I do teach classes, but I, I don't believe that methodologies are taught to individuals. I believe that they are discovered when you let go of control, when you actually reach outside of yourself and allow the magic in. So uh, there's a kind of a turning yourself inside out and going back to a profound truth that we all understand how to play. We just don't do it because we're thinking so hard in the maturity you know, our arrogance is that we're good at reading. That's not what uh, this this business is at all about. Magic exists in the, oh, I, I, I don't know. So the I don't know place is what make it titillates, fascinates, and creates awe in the viewer. And try to find that place. It ain't easy. It ain't easy to go there. So yes, Get, Getting outside of your comfort zone, in other words. Whatever that means to you, because... You are characters in, in every genre, commercial narration, promo, telephony, medical narration, um, animation, anime, dubbing, mocap. It doesn't, you're always a character. 
you are an entity that is trying to inspire your audiences. How do you step outside of your intellect, which is what we keep trying to use as good readers? If I wanted a reader, I'd go to the library. Um, you know, acting with our voice is, it's a, it's a beast unto itself that is like beyond time and space. It has no form. It is this wild, amorphic, allowing, if you will, of spontaneity. And what does spontaneity mean? And how do you teach every single entity to be their own version of spontaneous? It's, it's, it's like, well, that's like saying, I'm going to teach this class and you're all going to be better actors. Well, it doesn't work that way. My whole thing is if I was running a convention, there would be no classes. You would go and walk around the outside of the CN Tower at 500,000 meters up in the clouds, cabled off, and scare the bejeez out of yourself wearing your diaper and poop your pants and go, oh my God, I did this thing. Because what I don't think we recognize is that we are It miraculous. feels like that sometimes well, anyway. Yeah. you know, we're miraculous yeah. with all of it, with all of our marginalizations of self. Well, I'm old. Well, I've got a qualified instrument. Well, I'm physically something. Well, I'm this, I'm that. And, you know, we're horrible about being... You're perfect. You're perfect just the way you are. I want you. I don't want anybody but you. I don't care. But we don't allow that, and we have no self-worth, and we don't risk anything to show ourselves what we're capable of. So you see where the deadening happens? It's kind of like, what is happening? How do you teach people to play? Just say, okay, tug of war. Then go. What, what, what? And, and, okay, talk back and forth to the other team. Get, go. And then you say, I've got a water pistol. I'm squirting you in the face as you have coffee. I've got, I can't see. Blah, blah, blah. I have to set up a restriction just like a game. You can't know what's happening. You cannot know. Cannonball into the pool right now. Go. You don't learn it in the studio. You learn it in life. Go do something that scares you makes you go, oh my God, okay, that was really wild and hard, but I did it. I don't care if you do it well. I jumped out of an airplane. I peed my pants. I was like, they took a picture. It was on the wing of the plane. I was by myself. They wanted me to buy the picture. I would never, I wanted it burned. It was like, I looked like, I don't know what was happening, but it was very, very crazy. And I did this thing and I constantly, when I'm feeling asleep, go, I got to do something that has nothing to do with voice so that I, as a human being, celebrate all the things that I can do. I, don't, I go, can you slalom ski? Yes, absolutely. I didn't say well. I said, can you do it? I don't give a shit how you slalom ski, how you flamenco dance, how you hula hoop. Are you a circus performer? If you try it, you can say I do it. Right. So in other words, if you can do something that is seemingly hard to do and impossible and you try it and you do it, what else in your life do you think you could accomplish? Bingo, Dan. Like, we can all do everything. People go, well, I have no arms. I can't draw. Well, have you met the mouth drawers and the feet drawers? Like, everything is possible, but we're so locked into an institutionalized idea of how to do it that we forget, oh, you mean I, it's not just reading words and talking. No, <laughs> it's actually not. It's a whole canvas of extraordinary ingredients when we concoct the magic. It's not just the words. It's not just the script that creates the magic. There's in incredible feats that this entire entity, and we're all uniquely different, and yet we feel like we have to do it the same as the next guy. You don't. Well, Ellie Ray, it is always a thrill to hang out with you. It's been a long time, and clearly we haven't talked to each other in a while. We had you on the show a few months ago. It yes, wasn't we, like it a was a year. Ago. Well, it was months, like a few months in, in this timeline is like it was, you know, 500 centuries ago. But right. I just want to thank you both. I, I just think you guys are so phenomenal, what you do, George and, and Dan, and what you bring to uh, the entire team, to everybody out there by doing these kinds of interviews. It's phenomenal, gang. This is where the magic happens, where we get to communicate with one another, not in the auditions, not in any places. And I just wanted to thank you also for uh, donating to the gift package for the ultimate VO survivor uh, that Get Mike is doing another. We're in season three. And you have generously donated uh, to gift the winner. We have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of prizes that help 
those in an industry that, for the most part, can't afford mentally, physically, spiritually, intellectually, um, how to get themselves going in this industry. So thank you oh, for being a part of our prize package. And get out there and audition for that, guys, because, I mean, we've got trips to Hawaii. We've got memberships. We've got equipment. We've got studios. We've got everything. And these guys, of course, as well, have so generously uh, gifted us, and I'm forever grateful for oh, that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hey, George the Tech here for VOBS at VO North 2022. And I got to sit down here with Mr. Jack Cox, who isn't an actor. He isn't a casting person. He's coming at it from the directing side. Tell us about how you work, who you work with, and where. Uh, I work out of Vancouver uh, in children's television, uh, children's television animation. Um, I'm a voice director and a writer, mostly for, you know, boys' action stuff, a lot of aliens and robots, and a lot of kids fighting things and explosions and burps and farts and stuff like that. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what I do for a living, yeah. What did you do to lead up to that? What, where, where did you start your journey in, in directing? Uh, I started uh, from as a script editor, uh, doing dialogue polishes, <clears throat> just punching up jokes and uh, characterization. And then there was, uh, there was, I was just right place, right time, and I got to move into directing because someone else had a bigger project to do. So I just filled in and have been doing it ever since. We call it right place, right time, you know, the, or luck favors the prepared. Luck favors the prepared, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to keep an open mind. If you get too focused on your goal, then you kind of miss all the other paths to getting it sometimes, so... There's, there's two edges to that, being having a goal, but being able to go with flow and be adaptable. My, adaptable is in my path, but um, tell us also, like, are you doing a lot of this work uh, throughout the pandemic? Did it go to 100% remote, and how much of it is still happening remotely? Uh, during the pandemic, uh, a good chunk of it was remote. I directed from home, which at the time was a farm, so that was a nightmare. Uh, it was terrible. I Why the smell, the sound, or the or the internet? There was a rooster that that never stopped like the entire recording, and there was a bear that kept coming up to the front door. It was yeah, it was absolutely nuts. There was one time I was yeah shooting off bear spray and then running back into a session. So that was the, my pandemic. Uh, so that was pretty rough. Thankfully, I'm back in the studio now. All the actors are back in the studio, so we're all together once again and. Uh, but for a while there, it was pretty. It was pretty remote. We would call that a, the technical term for that is a, a shit show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, shit show times two. Yeah. Or foobar. <laughs> Bar. Yeah, I was. I was shaking. I've never had a bear in session. So uh, you were, were you on, were you on a couple panels during Beyond North, and what what did you guys talk about? Uh, we talked about uh, anime or dubbing series, like long range, not like long term animation series that are such a backbone to voiceover in Vancouver. Um, for staying, for keeping work, like just work. it's it's the it's the bread and butter. It's the bread and butter, yeah. It's the, it, that sort of consistency gives you freedom to to do other stuff or I'll just know that your rent's being made um, so we talked about that and also sat in with some really cool Toronto people here that I'd never met before like Susan and Kim and Roseanne and, and uh, got to talk about casting with them and that was really cool it's been really great to be here well I was lucky enough to sit in on the animation and video game and listen to those reads a lot of talent was here for sure They're, Anybody like stand out and you're like, oh, I'm gonna keep an eye. Yeah, there were a couple actually that I would, I think I would keep an eye on. I think, yeah. No, you don't name any names. I'm just saying. I'm not gonna name any names. No, no. But just anyone who had the keenness and the enthusiasm to just get up in front of like four directors on a stage, not just one casting director, but four directors on a stage in front of their peers. In front of their peers, that takes some like guts. I, will, I don't know if that, I don't think I'd do it. So so that was pretty cool. Well, it was cool. It was neat to be there and witness it and listen in. And it's been a pleasure meeting you. Thanks for sitting down with us. All right. And we're here with our good friend, Brad Newman, who 
What, what were you, what were you discussing? What were you, what was your topic here at uh, at VO North? So it's coming up at two thirty, and it's uh, talking about websites. And um, one of the biggest questions uh, that people typically have is actually about their email and how they can keep it out of people's spam folders. Which sounds really simple, but it's rather complicated. Why is it so complicated? There's so many people that send so many spam, and the algorithms that use to from companies like Google to detect that they keep very secret. They're constantly changing all of those things, but. Uh, and, and that makes it complicated. However, your mail can use three things that can be set up properly and that usually fixes the problem. But nobody knows about these things except Brad Newman and various other webmasters. That's right. And most hosts don't set it up for you. But if you think about you have keys to get in your house, there are keys to authenticate your mail. And the keys are very simple. Um, they sound confusing, but they're an SPF, a DMARC, and a DKIM. We seem to love abbreviations, and that makes things confusing. But there's simple tests you can run to find out which one's missing, and then you can just tell your host, this is missing, I need it fixed, and then they'll fix it. So it can be as easy as just checking and making a phone call, and then parroting a little small abbreviation that you really don't even need to know what it actually stands for. But you have to understand, because it's like, why is this going into spam? Or why, you know, I've sent this email several times, and this person... You always wonder, why is it that my email didn't go through? I mean, we can talk to the moon, but we can't seem to get an email across town. Because no one, I mean, no one really just does their job a lot of times, and little things get missed. That's one of the little things, but it's very, very important to your business. It's probably your primary form of communication. And so you need to just check that. And if you don't know how to check that, call your host and just ask them, are those three things in place? Or call me. I'll fix it. Why does companies like Google, who apparently run the world these days, why do they change these parameters all the time? I've I've noticed this, and our mutual friend Joe Davis is constantly fixing these things, and I'm sure you are too. You know, and they do it without notice. Why, why do they do that? Because the spammers are constantly changing their methodology and what they do. And so you, you have to keep either ahead of that curve or you have to keep chasing that curve and making a correction to try to keep what we're relying on, email, usable, usable and functional. So it, it's, it's, it's kind of this cat and mouse game. I mean, it, it, now Google is constantly changing things. And, you know, and I find that like, why am I suddenly, you know, why am I suddenly using this platform as opposed to the other one? And why didn't they warn me? I mean, they may send you an email like three months. We're going to be doing this, and and they expect you to remember that. Or um, Google tends to take the idea and throw it against the wall to see if it sticks, and that constantly gets taken away or changed and modified. Um, but ultimately, a lot of their changes are just like any company. They're derived to happen to grow or increase revenue. Um, and sometimes that can impact the little guy. Which is us. Let's shift, shift to voiceover for a little bit. What are cert- sort of services are you offering for the voiceover community? Uh, biggest thing we're known for is upper-level hosting. So basically, you, you already have a website or you should have a website and your demos are on it. And you don't have to know or worry about any of those problems that we just talked about, even the ones with Google, because we will do the check, we will make sure it's done, and we will fix it for you, and that's it. You can focus on what you're doing, which is reading the script. So hosting's our biggest thing. It's upperlevelhosting.com. Yeah, hosting is really important, as we know. It's, it's people where your demos are. It's where your brand is. It's how you're going to be sending your communications. It's, in my opinion, the, one of the most important aspects of your business beyond having the skill, the talent, the gear, and the demo. Because you need those things to do the job, but you got to have that website and that email to market to get the jobs. Let me throw you a curveball. Have you tried the new Wovo demo player? I have checked it out, and so far I like what I see. I think uh, they did a really, uh, a really solid job. Well, they, they, they worked on it for about like a year, so it, it should be working. And uh, we're offering that at, uh, at World Voices for, for members. All members can get that. So that's a really uh, cool thing to have. And you remind me that I need to make sure my membership is renewed or auto-renewed because I honestly don't remember. Well, I see your name on the list. All right, so good, good. You're, you're probably still in there. Then and I like auto-renewals. <laughs> it's a good thing. Right. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure, man. Thanks for all you do. Appreciate you guys. 
Well, so far this has been great, but we're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Inflated prices? Not at VoiceOverEssentials.com. Despite the nationwide inflation rate of over 8%, VoiceOver Essentials refuses to raise prices. In fact, they refuse to even say the I word. Their inventory is large on all their products, and they purchase them before the current economic conditions. It's simply wrong to increase profit, as many retailers are doing right now. So Harlan and company promise not to raise their prices during difficult times for everyone. They'll stay the course, steady and sure, flat and firm, solid and steadfast. Okay, enough. You get the point. Unfortunately, they're under the same inflationary pressures as everyone else, and they'll need to restock in the not-so-distant future. No doubt, there'll be sticker shock for them and you. So, right now is the time to order that Portabooth Pro or VO1A voiceover microphone and their VO2.0 headphones. Fight inflation at voiceoveressentials.com. Hello, VOBS viewer, listener, aficionado, fanatic. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I'm the same as you. I love this show, and I'm glad you're watching. Um, last week... We opened and closed registration with one week. That's the only week it's open for the VO Heroes Pro training curriculum. If you want to build a, a spectacular, successful, and practical, and satisfying voiceover uh, career, I'm here to help you with that. And one of the big questions we got was, that's a pretty hefty price tag. Do you have a payment plan? And I'm happy to tell you that I created one. For those of you who looked at the price of the incredible value that you were getting, but the price was a little outside your budget, how do we do this? So we have an option of a three or a four month plan. All you have to do is go to VOHeroes.com slash go. That's VOHeroes.com slash go. And you'll get all the details. If you want to jump in, but you didn't have all the money all at once, we can give you a payment plan. Check it out at VOHeroes.com slash go. And I'll see you inside the program. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. And we're back. And let's continue with these interviews. I mean, we didn't even know what we were going to get, but they've been quite interesting. So Yeah, and we got to use a borrowed microphone. We're not going to tell you what it is yet, but you let us know how you thought it sounded. This isn't that mic. This is a different one. So let us know what you think. And on with the interviews. And now with a couple of great friends, people that I've met for the first time and somebody I know very well, Kim Handysides, and her daughter, it's Lisa Suliatanu. Well done. Well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I study my notes. Uh, you're here at VO North. Uh, what were some of the sessions that uh, you were, were presenting, and what have you been talking about? Uh, E-learning and explainers was yesterday, and that was amazing. It was talking about you know uh, the the trends in the industry, where to find the work, but um, also just you know um, hopefully some really good coaching tips to be able to help people access more of the work because it's just like exploded. And I mean, there's, there's a lot out there. And of course, there's there's the threat of AI, which was something that I, I had to do a panel on yesterday, yeah. which I found fascinating. Uh, do you think that's, that's going to be a, a, an issue in the future? I think that it's probably going to take out the fivers. Um, it's going to... I've had a lot of clients who've actually tried an AI and then have come to me and said, 
it didn't work. Can you please do it for us well, as that's, a human? That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think what, uh, personally, I think what's going to be happening is that um, they're going to, it's going to help us, uh, them, realize the value of us because we are the human connection in, in e-learning, right? There's so much animation or slides or whatever, and the one thing that actually sinks it into the person's brain is the human voice. So an AI can't do that. Yeah, now, we, we've been, I, and I've been preaching the same thing, you know, saying that a, a computer can't emulate the thousands of choices that a piece of copy uh, is going to present to somebody, and they can create some patterns and stuff. Now, now Lisa, what, what are you doing with, with your mom here, and, 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 and what's your background in voiceover, aside from your, your mom here? So I've had the privilege of uh, starting my career very young. I've been doing voice voiceover since I was seven years old, and uh, I just I just fell in love from the moment that I that I was first brought into studio. And so um, I've built my career doing voiceover. I do a lot of cor uh, corporate narration, any type of narration really, and commercials, um, some video games as well, and. Uh, Recently, over the past couple of years, uh, been doing some coaching with three years. You're right. Time flies. <laughs> um, yeah, just been doing some coaching with Kim, and we uh, we love the group coaching dynamic that we've that we've been able to achieve with this this the voiceover study workshop that we've done, and um, we just want to keep uh, keep building that. Yeah. Have you found you enjoy coaching as much as voice acting, and why? As much, it's different. Uh, definitely as much, and I, I love to just share share my passion and share my knowledge. And um, I, I, you get to meet so many talented people, and to be able to give them advice that and and watch their progression and their growth, and to be a part of that is like just incredibly fulfilling. Yeah, we've had like uh, a few people in the in, at VO North here who have gone, gone through our class, our workshop, and uh, Rachel, for example, Rachel Gilbert said, "I'm now full time thanks to you guys," and I was like, "Yay!" And another one, Hattie Hajar, who's now got an agent and he's booking national commercials and he's doing really well too. So, yeah, it's very rewarding. Now, what's what's the name of your coaching outfit? It's um, the Voiceover Study. Yes. And um, you can access it on my website, kimhandysidesvoiceover.com, or on Lisa, lisasulitianu.com. Yeah. And it's a six-week workshop, over t uh, 12 hours over six weeks, with a maximum of 12 people, and it's very intense. We look at commercials, e-learning, um, uh, uh, corporate narration explainers, uh, the, all the adjustments for that, and documentaries, and audiobooks, too, and character work. That... that, that just about everything uh, it's, it, that's in there. Now, I, now we, we've been observing you two all weekend. You're obviously a very tight mother-daughter pair, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. we're close. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> what, what's it like working with, with your daughter uh, on this? Kind of oh, my stuff? gosh, it's so much fun. She's extremely talented and very bright, and she brings... What I love work about working with you is that she brings um, a fresh blood, fresh, ex fresh, um, uh, fresh set of eyes. Um, I, I, she's she's got her her fing her finger on the pulse of what's happening in the current world. I mean, I do too, but she's like kind of in it, you know. And I really love having that perspective uh, to, to help me grow as a coach, but also to see what it does to the people who come to our class. And what's it like working with your mom? Uh, Incredible! I, I really like. She's such an amazing resource, such an amazing person. Um, but then, obviously, also such an amazing resource. And I'm just, I. It's awesome to you know we, we go out for business lunches and we'll talk about uh, you know we'll catch up on life and then we'll close close that chapter and move on to the business chapter. And it's so nice to be able to to do both. And yeah. Well, good luck in the future. Thanks for joining us today and for the stuff that you've been offering here at VO North. And it's just great to see you both. And I can't wait till we see you again, hopefully in Orlando. Ooh, that's, yes, sounds great. Love it. <laughs> All right, we're here back at VO North with our dear friend and... And, and fellow wackadoodle engineer guy and and comrade and friend, friendly competition yeah Uncle Roy Yokelston and uh, <laughs> Uncle Stein yeah yeah right is it okay. is it Frodrick something like that yeah Frodrick Frankenstein yes yeah. 
Yeah. It's Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, oh, Mr. Frankenstein. Yes, that's it. That's yeah. it. Frankenstein. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're running all of the audio production for a show like this, which you, you do for almost all the, all the conferences now. What does it involve to do this kind of stuff? And does it involve sleep or eating or any of those things? It involves lack of sleep typically four hours so that's that's about all i get by the time i well, i have to do my facebook shtick you know like what day is today and all that stuff but um i know to the right is louder that's important <laughs> to know uh we're doing very little just even the microphones out i mean we got a bunch of wireless mics the more wireless mics the merrier because then you don't have to tape down wires uh, however, wireless mics could drift, could be too far away from the receiver. Battery changes, which I think we're sort of low on batteries now. Um, and uh, you need enough tech support help. Thank God George and Dan were here because they kind of, I, like I set it up, it was all set to go. I said, George, just sit here for a minute, make sure things are even. Then he didn't want to leave. I did. I couldn't leave because <laughs> once I started riding the gain on the mic for the animation thing, and they were kind of all over the map, then I was married to it. I couldn't leave. I had to keep my hand on the fader. Yeah, so we're just trying to keep it even. I mean, I guess if I had a compressor over the whole thing or auto, you know, auto mix would have been okay. But auto mix puts us out of business, so then we don't have to sit there. So... It's sort of the AI of, of audio mixing, you know. How much gear did you bring with you? Did you? I brought too much because in the original uh, plan with uh, Long and McQuaid, they, they were going to give me three, four little tiny two-input mixers. And I said, well, I got a panel of four plus a moderator. That doesn't really, I could make it, uh, you know. So they upped me to, so to answer your real question, so I brought a Mackie 1402, and an old school Shure mixer. What is somebody? P what? P what? I forget what model it was. I forget too, they but said, it, it, it looks said, classic. You really, you really brought one of those? Isn't it noisy? I said, well, it, 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 it'll do the it'll do the job. This isn't broadcast. It'll do the job. And P.S. I didn't use it anyway. So I brought way too much gear. They are using my 416 in the source uh, source elements booth, Bear Cave booth. And too much stuff. I brought too many pairs of headphones. Uh, too much. Stuff. We like to be overly prepared. Then when George comes to me and says, "Do you have a stereo mini?" To the, I said, "Yeah." As a matter of fact, I do. Yeah. Well, about a four-inch cable, and I had he had it. We so you have to overpack, uh, so you're because you can't. Where are we going to go? Uh, you know, it's too far to. And there's no more Radio Shacks. Damn it. Although there, he, there, you did have something that says, still said Radio Shack on it. So he has the same, <laughs> the same purple cable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, we had those at the United Nations. Those purple. I don't know if I swiped those from the United Nations or if I actually bought some from Radio Shack. You heard oh, that first here. Yeah. Don't tell anybody. It's yeah. a secret. <laughs> it's a UN secret from UN Radio. <laughs> What's really the difference between? You know, producing recorded audio for voiceover and, and doing live sound. What are some of the, the differences you have to think about? You have to, for the live sound, you kind of have to really ride gain on the nuances to pick up. The women were pretty well, you know, they were speaking here. And then the men were, I don't know why, every, the men were like soft-spoken and I... Or, or vice versa, you know, the woman is speaking softly and the guy grabbed the mic and then he's... So... Uh, when they're sharing a mic, you have to be kind of be on your game and just ride gain a lot. And uh, we don't care about noise floor. We don't care about compression, noise gates. You know, we don't care about any processing. This is live. It is what it is. So if this, if it was streaming out live, it would be absolutely fine. And nobody cares if you can hear it. And these, most of these rooms are kind of small anyway. So. You can hear them talking from the stage. One of the rooms we had to put fans in because the air conditioning was down. Okay, you need, we needed to hear them over the sound of the fan. So, and, and the mics now are much better than they were back in the day. They're more linear. The speakers are more linear. Feedback is less of an issue than it was before. All those, say? These, all those these, these, the acoustics in these crappy rooms. So I said to George, we got to make like a big tri-booth. 
and put it in these rooms and we'll all huddle inside the wigwam and, you know, uh, yurt, the yurt edition. Yeah, there we go. We'll have a yurt edition. Okay. Yurt, the yurt edition tribe. Everybody's to sit on the floor uh, with their legs crossed, though. Oh, that's cool. There's fire in the middle. No, I'm just kidding, but we should. Yeah, the, this fire from over here, the yeah, fire. Yeah, exactly. We should do that. Yeah. Right. And anybody else who's listening, uh, if this airs before October 8th and 9th, come on over to my house. For two days of nonstop live music and, and, and eating. Non-stop and bagels. Is the word, yeah. And nonstop live music and eating. When, whenever it used to come over, he, he immediately said, You got earplugs for me? It's like, You're too, too sensitive, you know. We try to. What do your neighbors think about that? Where you just tell them, Go away this weekend? Or? I was walking around the block and an older couple was uh, selling some furniture and they said, Hey, are you going to have that party this year? We love that music. So. I mean, the neighbor neighbors. One of them's, one of them's sort of an asshole. So uh, we don't, we don't care what they think. And the other one, they say, "Oh, we're going to be out of town. Don't worry about it." No, they're fine. I, people come by <laughs> from down the block. Like one day, na- one neighbor, I he's like, saw me eating a hot dog. I said, "You could say hello first, maybe, or would it be okay if I had some?" Like he's not on the list. <laughs> You're just my down down the block neighbor, and you are. He thought it was a block party. Yeah, he, he, was just, he was crashing. Asked, he was crashing. I asked the cops, "Do I need a uh, you know a permit for this?" They said, "Why is it a block party?" I said, "No, but 150 people are going to be there." They said, "Nah, you're good." I love Jersey. Yeah. 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 So and that's the Uncle Roy annual VO barbecue. That's right. VO BBQ 17, 17th annual. So go on Facebook and search Uncle Roy's 17th annual. And while you're there, there's a link for you to click to buy a, a Antland Productions T-shirt, just like just like this. Mine's waiting at home. Different five. You bought the long sleeve. Uh, I think oh, I got that one. Oh, that was okay. the one I wanted to get. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't see who bought what, but somebody bought the long sleeve fluorescent tie dye. Ooh, Ooh that's a little different. Yeah. So a tie dye, purple tie dye. Black V-neck women, black V-neck men, regular black. Uh, and that's a fundraiser as well. It's a fundraiser for no kid hungry, and so no kid should be hungry. So why not? And it's fun to wear one like the I had the tie dye one that I could take a picture of myself in front of the Arc de Triomphe and other places that I'm at. Hey, Uncle Roy, I'm here. You know, so. My son has hit my logo tattooed on his arm, and I said, "What the hell is that? Free advertising, Dad." Okay, fine. <laughs> He's a little t- too uh, tattoo centric over there. Yeah, Uncle Roy, always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, Especially the three of us get together; it's a have, nutty time. We have the best time. <laughs> we yeah. share and we share industry secrets. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And like like, like, the, like this microphone is a is a four sixteen wannabe <laughs> knockoff, <laughs> and probably like half the price. How much was this? How much a four? <laughs> like 250 hide the name though yeah, yeah make sure that yeah the name thing. is a little embarrassing but uh especially if it has a 2020 behind it <laughs> then it's really bad uh that's no for 250 bucks or 300 bucks versus a thousand um yeah it's clearly wanting to be a 416 it feels like one it's made of brass it's they couldn't use the same design on the sides because that's probably patented yeah. You get sued. I yeah, like the extra low end, then I don't have to add it. You, you think it's a little too much. Seems like it has that smiley face if you want. Oh, hi fi. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. disco smile. Yeah, just bass <laughs> treble, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, yeah. it sounds clean. It's it used clean. It would be a, a loudness button, right? <laughs> loudness would <laughs> make the bass and treble crank up. Yeah. Right. Hey, man. Always a pleasure. Yes, sir. We'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Always fun. All right. Bye, VOBS. Well, this has been very entertaining and very enlightening, and you know we want to thank everybody here. But first, in order to wrap things up, we got to finish with our second break. So we'll be right back. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Show. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, 
Stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. So I recommend for anyone that's interested in this space and for remote collaboration, recording, if you want to get into voice acting, um, this has kind of become the standard for a lot of uh, people to connect with either their agents or with the studios directly. If you're interested, I'd recommend going to SourceElements.com. So it's source-elements.com and register for a free profile. From there, you can download our software and begin the trial. Um, highly recommend reaching out to our support team. There are members all over the world in every time zone dedicated to help you getting you set up. They can help you get your ports mapped so that you can have the fastest way out of your internet uh, or out through your internet connection, bypass a lot of the network infrastructure so you can have a really solid peer-to-peer -peer connection with the person that you're trying to work with. This is Ross at VO North. Back to you guys at VOBS. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, we had a great time here. Uh, we didn't know what to expect. You know, they, you, you sort of came at the last minute. I, I did. I, I banged my head. Uh, there, all sorts of cool things happened. It, it, it's pretty bad. It all doesn't hurt quite as much anymore. No stitches. No. But it was really, really fun meeting all these people, and we really appreciate uh, Dervla uh, Trainer and um, Tanya Buchanan uh, for putting this together for us, and uh, we've had a great time. But we do need to thank a lot of people besides them. I mean, aside from our guests today, we need to thank uh, our, do our donors like 949 Designs, Jonathan Grant, Casey Clack, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Thomas Pinto, Shelly Avellino. Shelly, Shelly's here somewhere. Oh, we, got it. we can thank her personally. Uh, Brian Page, Patty Gibbon, Rob Rader, Greg Thomas, uh, Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Uncle Roy, who was with us, uh, Shauna Pentington Baird, uh, Martha Kant, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, and Sandra Manwiller. All right, you can join our mailing list too, and you know, make sure that you know what's coming up next on Voiceover Body Shop. It's on our homepage, vobs.tv. It says, you know, join our list or something like that. I'll have to take another look at it one of these days. <laughs> uh, also, we need to thank our amazing sponsors with whom this show wouldn't be possible, like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials. Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, JMC Demos, and WorldVoices.org. All righty. And of course, well, Jeff Holman wasn't here. He's, we didn't need anybody's questions. We had our own questions. And Sumer Lino, our director. We gave her the weekend off. Yeah, she finally had some time off. But we do have to thank Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us here in uh, Toronto, or as they say in Toronto, Toronto. Uh, this is a great business, folks. We're here to help you out with your home studios and bringing you the best people in the business to tell you what it's really all about. 
Uh, but when it comes to your audio, there's a lot you can do to make it work. But if it sounds good... It is good. Don't mess with it. Right. Don't fuss with it. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS.